what is you guys background as far as technical analysis um hey g uh do you have any technical analysis experience because i do not want to go through like the five minute basis of technical analysis if you already know it but you do need just a small five minute clip if we're going to go into the bollinger bands like we plan to do today so do you you have any technical analysis experience uh no uh the only thing um i recently have done would just go over a few videos about uh the candlesticks and uh okay uh, i kind of understand that but like the bollinger band nah not really i was i was kind of um uh, confused um how to um you know uh was trying to comprehend that and i just needed more from you um based yeah. off the bollinger we'll, band but we'll definitely break that down and um what about yourself, Jason? Do you have any technical analysis? No, what was that? I said I'm at a zero on that. You yeah, zero. Perfect. Perfect. So let me let me give you guys a quick over uh, overview. I'm gonna share my screen and give you guys just a a quick basic. Okay, so. Uh, can you guys see this? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. You see barchart.com. Okay. So uh, the basis of technical analysis is using charts to look at the history of a stock. So it's either charts or metrics, which are these things below. So, um, so let me just go with just basic charts and then we'll go into the Bollinger Band. If you look at this, you see all of this gibberish, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't mean anything to you unless you understand the concept of it. And, and charts have periods. It has a one day period, a five day period, a one month, three months, six months. This tells you the history of the stock over time. So over five days, this is what Amazon we're looking at that costs $3,249 to share. This is what it's done. And this side of the um, line chart shows where it opened, the price of it opening. And this is how much the stock traveled throughout the whole day. And this is the price it closed. So opening on this side, close on that side, but the stock did that much volatility within a day. Open, close. And then if you want to see the price, the price is over here. So you will have to literally draw a line across to see the price. But you can see in this case, the stock went from all the way up here from approximately 3,300 as far down as 27, uh, 2775 if we were to draw a line across. But the, the essential thing is, is a chart gives a visual history, a quick visual history of the performance of a stock. So over one month, I can look at what Amazon's doing. And essentially over one month period from here, you see the date, January, February, um, and then you can see to the end down here. So if I were to go from approximately January, we're on February the 20th today, right, guys? So right. we look at today, February the 20th, and we go, I mean, sorry, from this day, January the 20th to over here, February the 19th, because the stock market closed, right? Right here. Mm -hmm. Then you see a one-month period. Let's look over a three month period. You look at November the 23rd to today. So over that period, you can see that the stock three months ago was here and now it's here. It has appreciated. And you can see how much volatility, the range the stock moved, where it opened on the left, where it closed on the right. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, perfect. So why would one want to look at a chart? A chart is the cheat code to show you the performance if you're interested in a stock. So all of us technical analysis 
traders, we look at the long term first. Uh, most of us use five year. You remember when I was within five day? Look, it's just going sideways. It really, mm -hmm. it looks like the stock, the stock open here, close here in Amazon, and it's just going sideways. But if you look at the long term view, look what Amazon has done. <laughs> it's gone straight up. And so if you see a chart going this way, that's the wrong way, guys. That means the stock is going down. If you see a long-term trajectory here, meaning a five-year trajectory, August, I mean, April, uh, actually, this is February, a five-year going back to 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, February. So this represent from February, even though that says April, but April is right in here, right? Well, so this is represent right here, February 2016 to February 2021. And you can actually literally see the price of the stock. Look, if I were to draw a line across here, I can see Amazon, if I would have got it February 2016, I could have got it for $600, just visually. Now I can see from here and trace all the way up to here that the stock is at 3,200 now. So technical analysis is really, really powerful if you want just a quick visual, and that's the computer age, guys. They used to plot this by hand. Now in the computer age with the internet, you can just literally click on the stock and see the trajectory. So I can see in 16, I could have got this approximately 600 and now it would have been 3,200. Why is that important? The reason why that's important is when you buy stocks, you wanna buy stocks that are appreciating in value over the long term, okay? So then when you go from five year to one year, you can see it was here and it's gone up and you can see that it's trading sideways. But even though it's trading sideways, you know, long-term, this stock has a history of going up over five years. Let's look at 20 years. I can click 20 years. I can show over a 20 year period, this stock has a history of going up. And a lot more of recent because Amazon has, you know, put their foot into many different things as far as, you know, AW, uh, what is AWS, the server business, they have the delivery business, they have that rocket ship stuff that they're doing. They're well diversified. So they're making a gang of money. And then you can look at the years, 2021, 2001. You can look at that 20 year period. And just ignore the volume down here. Just look at the graph. So this is the technical analysis. Again, why is this important? Because when you invest in a stock, you want to stock with a long-term growth trajectory. And that trajectory um, will be easily demonstrated by the charts. Not all stocks have a 20-year chart, um, but most all, mm, not most all, a lot of at least have been out in five years, but you do have some newer companies. So this is a good stock. Let's look at some other long-term trajectory growth stock. So I'm calling long-term five years or more. So if we were to put in AAPL, which is Apple, look at the trajectory of that. Is this growth or is this decline? I will ask you, Jason. It looks like growth to me. Absolutely. Hey, five years ago, what was the stock approximately at? You can be off. 20. Right. Where is it five years later? 129. Exactly. Exactly. So five years ago, if you were to put $10,000 here, mm -hmm. you would have 60000 now. Damn. So the point is, is, there's no need to do the penny stock game. You, you got you you have big companies that got a history. So I liken this to if Michael Jordan has a 12-point game, 
in a 14-point game. Michael Jordan's career average is 30. So Micah is going to revert to his average of 30. He might have a 12 game here, a 15 point game here, but Micah is going to have 40, mostly 40 and 25 point games because that's his history. So you want to bet on companies with this history. If, if let's say um, Rajan Rondo has a 45 point game, and Rondo has a 30-point game. Rondo averages eight points a game. He's going to revert back to an eight-point-a-game average. He's not a 30-point. So you, you bet on winners. You bet. Bet means to, to buy, to place a trade. You bet on proven winners. You do not gamble. This is taking the gambling out of the picture. So new investors look for penny stocks because they can get a ton of money but they don't have a history on the company. And so a seasoned investors, we look at best of breed, proven history. I'm going to bet on Jordan. I'm going to bet on LeBron. I'm going to bet on Kobe. I'm going to bet on the Greek freak who consistently gives 28 a game. And I'm going to make guaranteed money because I see the tra trajectory. Look, I can even look at 20 years, over 20 years, even here. If I put my money here 20 years ago, yeah, it's, it's accelerating. Now, why did the, why does a company like this, like an Apple or Amazon, accelerate? You want to buy best of breed companies that want to expand in multiple markets and be successful. So Apple didn't stick with just computers. Apple's went with phones. Apple went with wearables like uh, watches. Apple went with the cloud and did apps. So that's why you see that exponential growth here. And Apple is still innovating. They're about, if you were following them and this is one of your picks, you would know that Apple is working on eyeglasses right now um, and, and with, with uh, you know, augmented reality in it and other things. So that's what you want to look at. Now, let me show you what you don't want to do. Let me show you a bad case. You guys ever heard of Macy's? Yeah. So everyone's shopping online now. So look at Macy's. 20 years ago, you could have got Macy's at 20. This is 2001. Look at 20 years later, what Macy's is trading for. 14, $15. That's a curve of going sideways over 20 years. And look how it shot way up and came down. This is what I call, in all due respect, the Rondo, Ron, the Rajon Rondo. He may have a high point game, but he's gonna come back to his average. He's gonna come back to his average. He's just a great average player. He's not a growth. So when you're buying stocks, you, you're really buying growth. And now let's look at the five year. So five years, the long term of what have you done for me lately? Five years ago, this stock was at around 44. And now today is around 14. So if you were a new investor getting in the market, not only has it tra traded sideways over the last 20 years, but over the last five years, it's going from left to right down versus left to right up. Let me show you another example. Um, let's see. Let's look at Under Armour. I know someone who has this stock. And if they would have looked at the charts over a five-year period, they would look at Under Armour trade traded around $44, I know $42 a share back in 2016. And now it's trading uh, around $22 a share. And look at the trajectory, it's down. You look at the peaks, you just go right across. It goes up and it's constantly going down. That's leadership and that's bad management. That's just not executing towards its competitors. And that's Amazon. What if we look at Nike, guys? N-I-K-E. 
same competitor over a five-year period started here five years ago. What was that, G, five years ago? Around what price? Like uh, 60. Yep. Where is it today? 42. What does the chart look like? It's, in, uh, uh, it's growth. Yeah. It's inclining, right? Not decline, yes. it's growth. So if you had a choice between Under Armour or Nike by looking at the charts, it's fairly simple. So yeah. this, is, this is what they call technical analysis. It's the cheat code. Is when you don't want to do that heavy fundamental analysis and you say, I want to compare one company to another, look at the five-year period. Let's look at the 20-year period. Over 20 years. Is this LeBron James or Kyle Kuzma? Is this Anthony Davis? Or is this, um, what's the name of that, Blake Griffin? I think this is Anthony Davis. Blake Griffin is averaging about 12 points a game right now, by the way. Let me look at Under Armour. You know, I just circled the 20. Let's look at Under Armour over 20 years. Look at that. Here, ran up way up here and fell back down, trying to come back. It's nice. So you want that straight, that, that continuous growth, right? So it did appreciate a little bit, and it could be because of recent years of management change, they're trying to get their act together. So that's what technical analysis does for you. Um, and so I wanted to explain that, if that makes sense. The yeah. second thing, before we go into the Bollinger Band, can I go over to the Bollinger Band? Did that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. All right, perfect. All right, so the second thing I want to go over is how do you no long-term trajectory. What is a second cheat code for long-term trajectory and picking a stop? The second cheat code is a thing called a 200-day moving average. And uh, this, this is really, really messy. Let me, let me, uh, let me create something. Uh, let me create a different code. Uh, let me do something a little different here. Uh, Cause that's super messy and it's hard to see. Uh, let me go with a template and let me go with the 200. All right, I think that, and then let me get rid of a study and uh, let me get rid of the Bollinger Band and let me get rid of the, uh, let me get rid of all of this stuff here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, and let me get rid of the volume. Okay. And I don't know how to get rid of this. I wish I knew how to get rid of this thing here because it's confusing. It's confusing. It's all outdoor. But, oh, let me get rid of the 100-day. don't really need the 100-day moving average. So, all right, guys. So now we're looking at... Um, this, this thing right here is irritating, um, but I'll go to the five-year. Oh, that's, oh, I can't see it because of that. Let's go to Macy's and see if we can see it. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, it's, oh man, it's messy. I want to show you guys um, an important concept called a 200-day moving average. I'm going to try to do my best to show it. Um, I'm going to get rid of the candlesticks, and I'm going to use the, I think I used that. Uh, so messy. Okay, well, let me show you. I'll do my best to show you and see if it works. Okay, so... What you want to do is, and I want you to ignore this color and this blue color. Please ignore, is that color blue right here? It's, yeah. And, and this orange color, is that mm -hmm. orange? Like ignore those two. I don't know how to get rid of it. What I want you to pay attention <clears throat> to is this red line and th this. This is the chart of the stock. You remember I showed you a little while ago 
the left and the right side. This is the trajectory right here of the stock, okay? And this right here is the 200 day moving average. What is the 200 day moving average? The 200 day moving average is looking at the stock price over the last 200 days and then dividing it by 200. So the stock price ended this day at 43 and ended this day at 50 and ended this day at 30 and ended this day at 45. Over 200 days, you add up all of the prices of the stock where it closed, and then you divide it by 200. And that plots the line. So right here, this went back 200 days in the past and added up all of the closing stock prices and divided by 200 and, and so forth to create this line. Why is this line important? This line is a cheat code to show the long-term trajectory of a stock. So, so right now we're looking at the five-year guys. I clicked on the five-year. So over the last five years, what this 200-day moving average is telling you is this stock has been growing. It's been going up. If this, if this um, stock were below the 200, that shows that the stock trajectory was going down for a period of time, okay? So really what you wanna see is the stock consistently remain or only briefly breach the 200 day so that you can pick growth stocks so that when you invest, you know you got a winner. You, you know, when you put your money in there five years from now, you guaranteed, baby. You just guaranteed. So in, in stock picking, you're buying growth. Does that make sense? So there's, yeah. the, there's the 200 day. Is this above or below the 200 day, Jason? What's that? Is it above? Above or below? Above, all of them. Pretty much, except for that one little in the middle of uh, what yep. is that December? And I only, I only want you to pay attention to this one, the red. So, if this and it is goes a, below one time, I think. Yeah, if you, it goes below right here, and look, yeah. if your if your stock that you like a lot had a upward trajectory historically, and you could buy at this price. Would you run or would you load the boat and double down or triple down? Jason? Oh, it's up time. What's that? I, I load it up. Exactly. That's the point of exactly. So you get those real opportunities when you got a growth stock and Michael Jordan says, hey, I'm going to sell some, some of my Nike stock and my Nike investment here at this price and and you know michael is consistent winner and so you say oh man this is when i'm not gonna buy one or two share i'm gonna buy 20 i'm gonna load the boat because i know historically these prices stay above the 200 day and it rockets above so here's another buying opportunity so people look at the 200 day, it got close to the 200 day. Here's another good opportunity. And you can look at the price. You see that number changing? You can actually see what the price was here. It's, it was 51.66 at this day. And so look how far Apple is from the 200 day right now. The 200 day price would be 70.61. Apple is way up here. If you were ever to get Apple down here, you should more, well, I can't tell you what you should do. I'll tell you what I would do. <laughs> but the, pro, the, po the point is, is if there was some sort of war or Trump became president, uh, everyone got scared out of their boots and the market sold off and that those events happen, they happen. You get buying opportunities. So it's really important to know the 200 day. Let's look at the 200 day on another stock and then we'll go 
Let's look at Amazon. Look at this, G. Is it above or below the 200-day moving average? It's above. Is it consistent? Uh, very consistent. If you get near the 200-day, what should, should you do? Oh, man, I got to dump, dump some money in there. Man, I might go mortgage my house, give me a second mortgage, <laughs> give me an extra 20 Gs, dog. I may. That's me. I'm not telling you to do that. I, look at these buying opportunities. But that's what the technicals do. The technicals show you the long-term trajectory. This is over five years. Do you guys want to see their uh, Amazon performance over 10 years? Look at the 20, look at the 200 day. 200 day say eight, $898. Throw five bands in there. Look at this, man. <laughs> look how far. Now, do you guys want to, um, let's look at, what were, were we on Apple a minute ago? Yeah. Let's look at that over 20 years. What do you think, Jason? And ignore this orange, ignore the blue. Just look at the red. What do you think, Jason? Of course. Huh? Of course. Yep. 33, 30. Yep, 33. And look what it's right as well. So, Jason, can you can you can you rest assured that if you were to invest in Apple, you're gonna make money? Does it have a proven track history? Yeah. Let's look at let's look at Macy's guys. That's a department store in a mall. <laughs> look at the red. <laughs> See the red? Yeah. See the stock price? You yeah. See? Since, since 2017, look here, since 2017, the internet hadn't completely taken off. Malls hadn't shut down. Look, now malls are shutting down. Look at the stock. Everything going online. It's below the 200 day, right? What else, we, did we look at Under Armour? Let's see how Un, Under Armour is performing to the 200 day. Ignore the orange and the red. Where's the 200 day? I don't even see it. Let me see if I can go out. Uh, let me go five year. There's five years, five year. There's the 200 day guy. Hmm. Would you buy Under Armour? Nah. <laughs> so that's what the technicals do for you. All right. What's another stock you think is uh, pretty bad right now? Who? What's what else we're not buying? Uh, let me show no. Nike. Let me show you their competitor, Nike, over five years. <laughs> Look, was this a buying opportunity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah last year, I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> that was just uh, last year. That was in April. That was uh. That was the big dip. This was the big crash. Only when we had the big COVID crash could you got the 200 day moving average price. Look, back in back in August, you could have got it of 2017. So, so again, guys, this is the beauty of the technical analysis. Any stock you're gonna invest in, you can look at the, the 10 year, Look at the 10 year. You can look at the 20 year. You can look at the one year. Look, you got an opportunity here. That was the March, guys. This was the COVID thing, right? You can look at this the last six months. You can look at the last one month. You got a dip. The last one month has been trading sideways. You got a dip, but six months. So if if Nike is trading sideways right now in the last one month, it's below its 20 day. Is this a good time to buy? I mean, I'm sorry, below its 200 day. Is this a good time to buy? I mean, if it's yeah. below the 200, yeah, if it's below it. Great oh, time. Yeah. yeah, but right now it's right at it. Right at it. Right at its 200 day. This could be a great buying opportunity. Could be. 
but I wanted you guys to see the long-term trajectory because first, before you use the Bollinger Band, you have to pick a growth stock first. You cannot use the Bollinger Band under Armour. You can't use it with Mason. I guess you could use it, but it'd be more risky to. I'm trying to show you a more risk-free way to make money so that when you put your money in the market and Jordan scores 12 or 15, You'll be like, I ain't worried about it because the guy averaged 30 for his career. All right. So look at that. Let's look at uh let's look at you. What was on the armor over the last um the last uh you let's look at under armor. Look at on the armor. Where's on the armor? It's above, guys. Uh, over the last uh, month. So on the armor is doing something. Do you trust it? from his long-term history. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't trust it. So that that's the point, okay? And then we could look at Macy's too over the last month. You know, if, if you want to uh, just go in um, micro. So Macy is right at it, but Macy could be right near the 200 day because it's performing so badly it dipped up and could probably may go back, but it could be a, a change, but hopefully that makes sense. I spent about 20 minutes or so on this guys. I said I was gonna do five, but I spent a little longer. So I apologize for that, okay? That's cool. All right, so let's go into the Bollinger Band. So now that you have the basis and technical analysis, um, Let's go into the Bollinger Band. Here's a stock that's doing badly that I have millions in actually, temporarily. Uh, this is Boeing, so it's not doing this good. And I could look at the three year, look at the three year. Boeing was doing great and then COVID hit and now Boeing is below. But let me look at the 10 year. 10 year, look at Boeing over the last 10 years. It was above, right? But recently it came down because we had two airplane crashes and COVID. So over a 10 year period, it, it has had growth. And over 20 years, airplane crash, but we were right on the right trajectory. And then the airplane crashes and COVID, and then it's working its way back up. All right, so let's go to the Bollinger Band. Any questions before I go into the Bollinger Band? Was that description okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys think you can do some technical analysis now? All of right. Course. Let's go to Apple. Let's... Uh, I got these ugly things in the, in the way. I hate those things. I wish I could get those out of my picture. Uh, yeah, let's see if Amazon, if I can get rid of those. So now that we know how to pick a stock, ah, this is beautiful. Now that we know how to pick a stock that we want, that was the first lesson in the technical analysis. Now we're going to decide when to get into a stock. That is what we use the Bollinger Band for. So you don't want to get in the stock when it's up here and it falls. You really want to get in at the better price. So let's do that. So I go here, I'm going to add the Bollinger Band and I'm going to add this. All right, so here's the Bollinger Band. And um, let me... Let me explain the concept of the Bollinger Band. Um, so, so the first concept is that there's a couple of rules here. One, here's the top of the Bollinger Band. Here's the middle of the Bollinger Band. And here is the bottom of the Bollinger Band. Let me show you another stock that's not so wide. Let me show you. Um, maybe a forward. Let me try forward. It may not be as wide. No, that's messy. Let's do Boeing. 
Okay, that's kind of wide too. Here's the top of the Bollinger Band, the middle, and the bottom. You guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Now, what does the Bollinger Band represent? The Bollinger Band represent a concept called mean reverting. Stocks, uh, stock prices are mean reverting, but the growth of a stock is not. What does mean reverting mean? Mean reverting means is a measure of volatility meaning that the stock, a stock as it goes up or down in trajectory will always snap back to some sort of average. So you notice that a stock does not go up in a straight line. It goes up and down throughout the day, as well as, let's, let's look at a one month. So we oh, that's, let's look at a five day. Uh, yeah, closer, it gets worse. Let's look at six months over a six month period. Look at, you, you remember, look how the stock goes up and down in a day. But look over time, it goes up and down over time. It goes down and up and down and up. And if you look at a 10 year, it is going down. This is the stock price within the Bollinger Band. It goes down and up. That's called mean reverting. It's going to, as it goes on its trajectory, it's going to have volatility, meaning different price ranges uh, as it goes through its trajectory. So what the Bollinger Band does is give you a concept. One, what is that average price that the stock mean reverts around? And then number two, when is the point where it's way away from its mean that you should either sell or buy because it's going to snap back towards that average? Would you like for me to repeat that? Or did that make sense? Yeah, it made sense. Here's the stock as it moves. The middle, this middle here is the mean, is the average price that the stock behaves at. This is the point where the stock typically on average, the price would be. This is the mean reverting line. It is the middle line. It is called, you know how we had the 200 day moving average to mm -hmm. see the upward trajectory, you know, the trajectory if it's below or upward. This is the 20 day moving average. And studies have shown that a stock givenly will like to revert back to its 20 day. So when it's high, it wants to come to the 20 day. When it's low, it likes to come to the 20 day. And you will see a stock go up, hit the 20 day, come back, hit the 20 day, go below, hit the 20 day, go up, come back to the 20 day, go below, come back to the 20 day. I, that's over a 10 year period, guys. I can show you over a five year period, it's hovering around the 20 day, it goes up, touch the 20 day, goes up, come back to the 20 day. Uh, and, and, and these periods of time, you can look at them. So from August 2017 to April 18, this barely touched the, two, two, um, the 20 day. But it can't, it start reverting close to it. And, and then it finally hit the 20 day. This is a real bullish stock. It is taken off. It has, Boeing was out of control. Boeing was growing like crazy where it was just skyrocketing and barely hitting this 20 day. And then at this point, 2018, it started hovering around this, going back and forth around this 200, I mean, sorry, 20 day. And then it shot up, came back to his 20 day, shot below, came back to his 20 day. So again, this is your mean reverting line. This is your average. Stocks, typically their price 
reverts, whether it's high back or low back to its 20 day moving average. So if one were to know that, one needs to know a second concept of probability. And what the, and the probability is, is a thing called, called standard deviation. But before I go into the standard deviation, I want to make sure you guys understand mean reverting. Do you understand the prices are mean reverting? Yeah. Okay. You understand, G? Yes. And so the stock growth is not mean reverting. Let's say, let's look at, for instance, the stock growth does not necessarily have to be mean reverting. Meaning, look at Amazon. Um. And I said the stock growth, not the price. Amazon price is mean reverting. It's going to hit that 20 day and come back. But the growth can keep going up forever. So if, if the stock price was here and the growth were mean reverting, that means this Amazon has to come back down to here at some point in time. That's what mean reverting for growth would mean. But you can see that the growth of a stock is not mean reverting. It can just go up forever, but the price is mean reverting. It fluctuates and it will go around a particular average. I just wanted to nail that home. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So now with that concept, here's how you get into a trade and reduce your risk of losing money. Let's go from, this is the five year we're looking at. Look, look, 10 year, is Amazon growth mean reverting, Jason, over 10 years, the growth? Yeah. It is? The growth is mean reverting over 10 years? So the price was down here, the price of the stock was down here, and now the price have mean reverted all the way back down oh, to not here? Yet. Huh? Not yet. Uh, it's now never gone 20. to. Amazon yeah. is growth. The growth does not mean reverting. But what about the price, the price of volatility? The volatility of the stock price is mean reverting. I just want to nail that home. The growth is not mean reverting. The volatility of the price of the stock is mean reverting, meaning as it grows, the price is going to hover between an average as it grows. So volatility is mean reverting. The growth of the stock itself is not. So, so knowing that, and I, I hammer that a lot, so I, excuse me for being so repetitive, all right, so this is the 20-day moving average. So this is our reversion line. This top line and this bottom line represents two standard deviations from the mean. The mean, the average. What does that mean? What that means is one standard deviation means that a stock price 68% of the time will be within a particular range before it comes back. Two deviations means that the stock price is 95% away from its average. So if a stock typically average around this 20 day, if it's on this line, it is 95% probability that it's going to come back here because it's away from its average. So if you were to get into a trade and you want to buy a stock and it's away from its average, it is trending high. It is a 95% chance, only a 5% chance of staying up here because the standard deviations say that it should be around its average over time. So the price has just got so much momentum 
that it's breaking the probability average. So you would not want to buy up here. Uptrend. Uptrend, because you see it's two standard deviation. Is it a 95% outside of where it's supposed to be? It's only a 5% growth probability, but this is the find the odds. It should be reverting back to its mean. So you're telling me that you you were like, all right, I'm gonna wait four months. To Absolutely. Buy it. You when you when you want to get into app uh, Amazon, you would say, mm, no, 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 no. It's it's on the second deviation line. It's it's only five percent chance of staying up here. Something is pushing it up, pushing it up, pushing it up. Boom. When it comes back to its twenty day, then I would buy come near and I will look at this trend over time. This is a 10 year period, guys. So you will look at a six month period. See, over, over, over five years or 10 years, that looks crazy, right? But then once you go over six months, you see all of the buying opportunities. You saw, now you can look at the mean reverting. Look at Amazon, it's just mean reverting. Now you can see Amazon goes here, it goes down, two standard deviations below is mean. Jason, is that a buying opportunity or a sell opportunity? Uh, buying. Absolutely. So you see your stock price go down here and hit that second deviation, you're 95% chance of it's going back up to is mean. You wanna buy here, baby. Sorry for using such slang, but I get excited. <laughs> This is where you want to buy. You want to buy here and get into your trade. What if you want to do a short-term trade and get out? Where will you get out, G? When they hit the peak of the... Um, the second that, deviation, the, the top yeah. end, right? You said you want to do a short-term trade. You want to put up, you want to do an option contract, short-term and leverage. You buy here and... You put your option contract out a few months beyond so that you give yourself some time. And when it gets here, you sell because you're 95% away from your average. You're two standard deviation, one deviation, one standard deviation is 68% away. Um, two standard deviation is 95%. Three standard deviation is 99% away. But you don't want to do three standard deviations because you'll miss so many trades. So two standard deviations is enough. And you, guys, you're not looking at the growth. You're looking at the volatility of the price. That's why I was hammering on below, before. So Amazon, I've already proven that it grows. I've proven that it stays above the 200-day moving average. What I'm showing you over a six-month period is the price volatility of the stock. So if you were a trader, Forex, stock, option, these are, this gives you your buy signal. Sell here, buy, uh, keep it, hold it, wait till it gets to the second, the second, uh, um, buy more, sell, sell, don't wait, uh, buy, sell, Hold it, hold it. Mm, so you use this for, for any of those. Uh, so, so that's the beauty of the Bollinger Band. And look what we have here, guys. What is this telling you? This is telling you, even though the price volatility is going up and down, up and down. long term, the stock is still doing what? Under its 200 days. So is is the stock is the stock growing or falling? It's growing. It's growing. So don't worry about this up and down. This technical is showing you it's still growing. So you just playing volatility of the stock. Now, if you want this stock long term, you don't buy up here. You just wait for a good entry point when you're the second deviation below the mean, because you're ninety five percent chance of it coming back because volatility of a stock price is mean reverting. I keep repeating it so you'll understand this mean reverting term. 
And I'm I'm proving to you right here. Look, is this the definition of mean reverting, guys? Is that trading right around that 20 day? Yes. Yeah. Can I show you proof that it's not just uh, Amazon? Maybe I can show you Apple, even though it's messes now, you may be able to uh, see it. It may be a messy chart. Okay, here we go. Look at Apple. Here's the 200 day. So it's still going. Here's that 20 day. What do you do right here, Jason, if you were trading? Where's where's that right there? Yeah, what will you do right here if you were trading? It's right at the it's right at the uh the median right there. Uh, you would uh, uh, uh hold on, hold on. You following me? Uh, you follow me? Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Where where am it's I right? Right now? there. You would sell it up there. Absolutely. Absolutely, you get it. What would you do right here, Jason, if, if Apple, you saw Apple and you was tracking it? That's, uh, that's the entry point, right? Yeah, so that's where you would buy. It's two standard devi deviations away from the mean. What about a G if you were trading and you had the stock and you wanted to get out? What point? What if you want to buy and you say, you know what, I want to buy some more Apple. It's been up. It's been up. Let me uh, drag it. Let me see if I can drag this. It's been up. You've been waiting. 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 You say it hit the 20 day. Uh you waiting. And when you, if it's right there, you want it. That's your entry point. There you go. So so you got oh, you gotta man. be patient. You gotta be patient. And you can look at when your entry points were. You can see right here, your entry point right here was around August, between August and July. There was an entry point right here. So let me. There was, there was another entry point in September. There was another entry point right here. Mm. So let so, me ask you this: like, so obviously, when you're looking at the uh, current uh, stock in this uh, present time, it's going to have this last point all the way to the to the all the way to the right. Yes. So. When yes. you see when you, so when you see that look look at look at look I just bought my mom some apple, I just bought it on Friday. Look what apple is this is apple right? Yes. Look look who apple is. So you got so that so you got it the entry point right there. Absolutely, I just bought so you, it yesterday. I bought mom some and I bought my friend mom some. I spent two I get I put two uh, ten grand for my mom and this right hmm. here. So I've been waiting. So, I've been so, waiting. It's been up here. Look, it's been up here as high as up here at 143. Wow. It's on the second deviation. Wow. If, if, you, if you had this kind of technical, Jason, and you could look at this and see the stock is going up like crazy. It's going up like crazy. Should I get in? Should I get in? And you understand that it's the second deviation, 95% away from its average. And stocks volatility has mean reverting, so it snaps back to its average. Then why would you buy ninety five percent away when when volatility is mean reverting and it's gonna snap back? And because of volatility, if the stock runs out of steam, then it's gonna go to its second deviation below. Mm. But if if a stock is really really strong. It will only snap back to its mean and go back up. So that when a stock has a lot of momentum, it'll just do this. So some stocks do not give you an opportunity to go to the second deviation below. But Apple is a stock that runs out of steam. So if you are patient, you will be able to get a second deviation pull. But there are some stocks that's so hot over the last six months. And guys, when you're going to get in a trade, we use six months. So, you know, to do an evaluation, long-term trajectory, you know, we do the five-year. You can look at the 10-year as well. But when you really want to get into an a, um, a entry point, you look at the six-month. And the six-month would give you the pattern 
of how that particular, the pattern of the volatility. So I'm, I'm taking you to another level. The Bollinger Band is a measure of volatility. And based on the volatility of the stock, it gives you the indicator of when to get in. The, the 200 day tells you what stocks to pick. The Bollinger Band tells you when to get in. And then if you want to be a trader, which I do a little bit of, then you'll buy here and wait till it get there and say, I'm on the second DVA. I'm getting out. I'm taking my $2,000 and run. I'm taking my $150 and run. I'm taking my four grand and run. I'm taking my $50 and run. I've hit that top deviation. I'm 95% away from the mean. And then I wait. And then I'm, ooh, I'm 95% below. And I know volatility is mean revert. I'm going to load up here. And I'm going to wait until it hits that sec that top. I know it's going to get there eventually because it's a growth stock. It's a growth. The 200, middle, 200 moving out. It's a growth. So it's eventually going to get there because it's a growth stock. So I'll buy down here, guys. Wait. Oh, I got close. Wait. I got close. Wait. Boom. That's my sale. It, it, it may keep going, but I got my money. I didn't lose money. The name of the game is not lose money. Warren Buffett has a famous saying. He, he said, uh, rule number one, don't lose money. Jason, do you know what rule number two is? Rule number one. See rule number one, exactly. You heard that saying. Rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, see rule number one. So you, you don't be overly greedy. You have a strategy. You get in at the second deviation below. You get out at the second deviation high. This is just one strategy. If you're going to go long term, you just get in the second deviation low and just let it ride. But traders, this is one tool that traders use as an indicator. Now, let me say, no indicator is perfect. So most traders, including myself, have a second indicator to validate this. So I'll see this, and this will be an indicator to get in. And then I have another indicator that I look at to validate. Okay, the signals I'm seeing, it corroborates this signal. But today, we'll just talk Bollinger Band. Uh, in the future, we could talk about other indicators that works along with this that would corroborate, okay, this indicator says get in, and the other says get in. I got validation. I'm in. This indicator say gets out, get out. I got a second indicator that validates, that corroborates. I'm out. So that's kind of how it works. Mm. All right, guys, that was the Bollinger Band. That was the whole setup. And uh, that is approximately right at one hour. I wanted to respect you guys' time. I really wanted to go through it. I hope it was worth your time. And then we could look at some others. I just want to show you how stocks, you know, how they mean revert consistently. The, the volatility of the stock mean revert. So, um, Oh, where's the Bollinger? Oh, the Bollinger Band is down here. And uh, you have to ignore that stuff there. Uh, let's go three months so we can see. Uh, it's hard to see that. Uh, yeah. uh, the chart is tight. Let me see if I can expand this a little bit. Want it. It's hard to see the forward. But I just wanted to show you if you consistently just um pick any stock can you guys think of a stock so i can just pick one live uh zoom. anyone you know about interest heard about zoom we can do What's neil that? neil okay yeah. let's look at neil all right and then let's look at it over the last six months okay uh let's ignore the orange and the blue Look at Neo's 200-day uh, moving average. It's above, so it's growing. That's good. 
over the six months. Can we look at, can I look at it over uh, two years? I don't think Neil has been out two years. Let me look at it over the course of a year. So it's been above the 200 day. All right, let me go six months into Neo. Look at Neo here. Neo has, uh, here's the reversion line. And then let's start from today. Neo, That's look what Neo is. Look what Neo is on the second deviation, Jason. What do you think? Yeah. Did yeah. you buy it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, I may, mm. this, I may do this trade on Monday. <laughs> what, uh, you talking about option? Huh? Option. I may do an option on this. It's on the second deviation, and, mm. and it's on the second deviation low. <laughs> and look, and mm. look, and look, and look at the history over the last six months, guys. Boom, boom, boom. What's that? That's about a two week or a month. Well, you can look here. You can look I'm right down here. No, 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 The option that can be like a two week joint. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta look at the prices and stuff. But mm -hmm. look, back in December, you could have got it down at the two hundred. I mean, I'm sorry, the second deviation low. Wow. Uh, wow. This is a uh, now February uh, the fourteenth or twentieth. This is the only since December. This has been the only chance to get it at the second deviation low. This stock has been so strong. It's been hovering. It's been bouncing off the 20 day. Look, it bounced off the 20 day. Let me go um, three months. Mm. So over the three months, no, you could have got it. Yeah, in December. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have got it in December, but eh, you could have got it here too. It got close, mm -hmm. but it's pretty much been bouncing off the 20 day, right around the 20 day. But now it's down on the second deviation low. And then if mm. you go out six months uh, and see what you do is you just look at how the price of the stock has been behaving, behaving. Look at this. It's been hard. Could you buy this stock when it was on this? Could you? It's too dangerous. And so that's what the technicals and Bollinger Band does. Bollinger Band say you do not chase a stock you wait for your entry point you see it going up and you're like ah i want to get in it's too dangerous but then you remember the concept of mean reverting and you say ah it revert and then there's your period you see 12 one del g yes at the bottom mm -hmm. around 12 one it reverted back to his mean and then you could have chose to get in there because it has so much strength it might bounce off or and that wouldn't have been that would not have been a bad time to get in. But if you were patient and said, I'm gonna wait for the second deviation low, mm. you would have waited, waited to here to December wow. 14th. Then you would have load the boat because you know the history, you see it's above the 200 day, so you know it's trending up. You got a great entry price, could have dropped two G's in here and and I can tell you what that price was. If you look up here, this tells you the closing price right here. So that C, this tells you the high of the, what it opened, the high of the day, the low of the day, and that C here is the closing. So we went to that date uh, when it was down there. The closing price was $40.98 that day. Uh, let me blow that up a little bit so you can see that. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Four, so let me put this line right on it. $40.98 was the closing price. That day was a great day. Uh, you could have got in. And as the stock, you see, it's break back down to its 200, to its second deviation low again. This is another great entry point. Hmm. But see, getting in here reduces your risk of losing money. It increases your risk of making money. And that's what investing is about, is reducing your risk. And that's how we use Bollinger Bands. And that's how we use technicals. And I'm saying, this is a good entry point right here, dude. It's a mm. second deviation loan. So, all right. I could go more into Bollinger Band because the width means something the width means high volatility um so 
the width here is low volatility. So of recent, the stock prices have not been swinging as much. So it's going to hover so around that option, mean. So the option prices are cheaper right now. Oh, okay. So the bigger the band, the more expensive the option price because the volatility is high. And again, volatility only means the stock price swing up and down within a day or over a period of time. So there was huge swings in the price of the stock going up and daily movement. Look at that movement there. Look at the length of that line. And, and uh. these, these lines, and then look at the length of these lines. So the volatility is coming down, the price swing, and, and you can see it's, it's trading sideways, more close to the 20-day, to its mean. So the width of the band is lower. That means the option prices are cheaper if you were going to do options. When the, mm. when the price is big like this and wide like this, when the band is wide like this, this means the option prices are more expensive. So guess what you want to do if you were an option trader in closing? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, when the option it. prices are cheap, you want to buy. When the option prices are high, you want to sell and become the casino. Mm. So nephew, when you see your uncle selling puts, I look for this. When you see your, 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 your uncle buying calls, I look for that. Mm. And then that's gotcha. it. That's the game for the day, guys. That's the game for today.